Hi, my name is Richard James. I'm a personal branding expert and I got my epiphany for how my life truly needed to go forward when I was given two choices. Either have massive surgery or face death. And I didn't want either. Hi there, my name's Richard Jaynes. I'm a personal brand expert, and I help people embrace their passion and purpose so that both they and the world can benefit from their zone of genius. So how did I get my start? Well, I came to America as a filmmaker and started to get into development hell for all these projects I was working on, just as the internet was taking off. So I took a big leap of faith and started working with these new up and coming sites like Yahoo and Huffington Post and Hulu and places like that where everyone in the industry was saying, you're crazy to make that leap. And that seems to be a bit of my story is that I make these leaps which other people think are crazy. But in the long run, amazing things turn out. So in this case, I got onto this funny thing called social media, which I fell in love with. And very quickly, I was getting phone calls from everyone from Larry King, and I don't think you can get much older than Larry, down to young Disney stars saying, how do I grow my social media? And I loved it. I absolutely loved sitting down with someone and saying, well, if we're gonna grow your following, the most important thing is to understand who you really are and why you wanna grow your following. And as that became bigger and bigger and I got more and more phone calls, I started taking on staff, I started taking on money, and suddenly I found myself with this massive agency where I was so far removed from the one-on-one -on -one work that I loved. I was an accountant. I was dealing with legal, I was dealing with HR problems, everything but what I really loved. And it started to take its toll. Now I don't know whether you've ever ended up in that situation where all of a sudden you look up and you say, how did I get here? Not that necessarily where you are is a bad thing, but it's very far removed from where you always thought you would be, from your own zone of genius, where you can really offer value to the world. So. My wake up call came when I was rushed into hospital and I was weighing just 110 pounds in weight and I'd constantly neglected my health on the basis that I'll deal with it when. I'll deal with it when we get more stuff. I'll deal with it when we make more money. I'll deal with it when pushing it down the road. And there I was really, really sick. And the doctor came in and she said, Richard, you've got two choices. We can either roll you into an operating room right now and take out all of your colon and put a colostomy bag on for the rest of your life and you're gonna be on some pretty heavy drugs. Or you can go home today and you've got about two weeks until your colon is so thin that there is a really high likelihood that it will burst. And when it bursts, you'll die. I didn't know how to process it at that moment. I'd been running so far ahead and not paying any attention to these signals that my body was sending to me. So I thought, well, I've got a couple of weeks. And I went home and my wife and I burst into tears sitting on our bed and my eight-year-old daughter came into the room. And she'd been aware of how sick I was getting. And she looked at me and she said, Daddy, I know what your problem is. And I said, okay, Ella, why don't you tell me what my problem is? And she said, you're not doing what you love. And in that moment, I went to say to Ella, it's, it's not that simple. We've got bills to pay for, we've got the house, we've got your school, we've got food to put on the table, I've got all this stuff that we're responsible for. You can't always do what you love. But I stopped myself, I took a deep breath and I said, thank you, Ella. I couldn't bring myself to say to my daughter that you can't do what you love. I want her to be able to do anything that her heart says that she wants to do. So I said to my wife, can you actually give me a little bit of time? I want to digest what Ella's just said. 
So my wife takes Ella out of the room and I turn to my bedside table and I take my book with my pencil because I was waking up in the middle of the night and writing my to-do lists because I always had these things that, oh, I've forgotten this. And I wrote up at the top, Richard loves. And I wrote Amy, my wife, Ella and Finn, my kids, Roger, my dog, and they put a question mark next to the dog. Can an Englishman really love a dog? And then I went blank. There were things that were coming to my head, but they weren't making my heart grow the same way as Ella, Finn, Amy and Roger were. And I realized in that moment that I had gone so far away through chasing this, this idea of success and following what everyone said I should be doing that I'd lost track of who Richard James really is. And so I said to my wife, look, I've got a couple of weeks and they can go and take these intestines out, but it's not gonna deal with the problem. I need to deal with the root. And I need to work out what Richard loves. So I packed the car up and I went out to the desert and I spent three days in the desert writing what Richard loves. And it started with thinking about things where my heart was just overflowing and full and ready to burst. Everything from being in an Indian restaurant when I was 17 with the most fantastic food and the aroma coming through with a group of friends around me through to being six years old and watching Star Wars on television, hearing my dad mowing the lawn outside and the smell of cut grass coming in and it was about to thunder and rain and I could feel the energy in the air. And I went through and listed with specificity every time that my heart was just enormous. And I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and I didn't judge it, I just wrote. And every time my, I ran out of things to say or my, my hand started to hurt so much I couldn't write anymore, I'd go for a walk, come back and I'd write again. And through doing that, I began to see a pattern. And I began to see a pattern that was present through every time that my heart was enormous. And doing that exercise sent me on a journey and part of that journey then had this light bulb moment of these are exactly the same things I was saying to all my celebrity clients. Who are you? What do you love? Why should anyone care? What is the modality of your success? And perhaps one of the most important elements, what is your shadow? What are you afraid of? What is holding you back? And I went back to Los Angeles where my wife and kids were and I said, I realize I have to get out of wearing this mask of being an executive because it is a mask that I'm not meant to be wearing. And she said, well, what are you going to do, Richard? And I said, well, the one thing I loved about directing, about working with the actors, about working on social media was really getting to the crux of who someone is. And that's what I'm going to do. And I think it's called personal brand work, but authentic personal brand work. Because when you work on a personal brand, it's a lot less about logos and, and design of logos and, and, and your assets, and a lot more about designing your life. Because look at any corporation, and their brand is everything they do, just as our brand is everything we do. And we all have a brand, whether we like it or not, we all have a brand. It's just that are we being proactive in how we are leading our life with that brand, or are we being reactive to the opportunities around us? Because when we're reactive, the world starts to dictate the direction that we go, and suddenly we sit up and we look around and we say, how did I get here? So for me, I built a website that night. It took me two, three hours. Anyone can do it, and I put it up online. And I said, I'm a personal brand expert here to help you connect your passion and purpose so that you can profit from it in every single way. And overnight, a gentleman from Australia reached out to me and said, I've just found your website and I want to work with you. I had a client within 24 hours and that month I was earning more money than I'd ever earned through my agency. And I was happier and more fulfilled and working less hours and bringing who I truly was to the world. And it was a complete and utter game changer. Now for anyone who's, who's listening to this right now, one of the big things that I urge you to do is to write your love list. Grab a pen and paper and start writing down 
all those times in your life where your heart has just oh, grown and felt as if it could just explode and be incredibly specific over it. And as you go over that, once you run out of everything, anything you can say more, start going back for every year of your life. Because in doing so, you're gonna to start to, to, to feel that essence of love around you, and you will be more prone to seeing opportunities to lean into it. Because where energy, where focus goes, energy flows.